Okay, just a quick review. If we have this basis and use this matrix relative to that basis, then we make these eigenvectors. Okay, so we can choose our eigenvectors. We can choose our eigenvalues, the multiples that we want of our eigenvectors. And we can set up that transformation. We want to do this transformation relative to the standard basis. Well, we go through this entire process. We create the column of eigenvectors matrix or the column of basis vectors matrix, generally a column of basis vectors. Uh, but in this case, we've made them eigenvectors by making this matrix diagonal. If we multiply those by any vector represented relative to basis B, we get the vector as it would be in actual R2. We invert that matrix because we're going to use it up here to take this eigenvector, uh, th this matrix relative to the eigenvector basis, and the column of eigenvectors matrix here and the inverse of that matrix here. Okay, if we start in standard basis, apply the inverse matrix, we get the re representation of that vector with respect to the eigenvector basis, and we can multiply it by this diagonal matrix, very simple multiplication, that's the advantage of the diagonal matrix, one of the advantages. Uh, get the transformed matrix relative to the eigenvector basis, then map it back down here by the column of eigenvectors matrix. Okay, we can write out what that does. Okay, the resulting transformation, the A matrix then, we start here, we have to go here, here, then here, meaning we use this matrix, then this matrix, then this matrix. <coughs> we multiply those matrices out, we get this, and we know that this matrix then, if we've done the calculation correctly, has to have eigenvectors, negative 2, 1, negative 4, negative 3, with eigenvalues, um, negative 2 and 3. Well, we then take this matrix, pretending we haven't seen anything else. We take it's the determinant of the matrix that we use to find the eigenvalues. We find the eigenvalues to be 3 and negative 2. Now, where do we go from there? Well, we go here. Okay. Now, I haven't gone through the process. You know, we've, we've been over that. Uh, you know how to find the eigenvectors. We've done several examples, uh, and you've done a lot of homework finding eigenvectors. So we will find that the eigenvectors are these, and that this eigenvector corresponds to this eigenvalue, this one to this eigenvalue. So we can now find the matrix in the eigenvector basis. Of course, we already know that this is what it's going to be, because that's where we got all this. Okay, but to do that, here's the picture. Okay, if this is the matrix A sub B in the eigenvector basis, and this is the matrix A equal to all the matrix we got from the previous process, then if we want to find the matrix relative to the eigenvector basis, assuming we didn't already know it, you know, assuming we just started with this. Again, if we start with this matrix, we get these eigenvalues with these eigenvectors. Then we can form the column of eigenvectors basis, a matrix, this one and its inverse, and put them in the right place. Now, where do we need them? We want to be able to go from here to here. We want the matrix that goes from here to here. That means we start here, we transform down into our standard basis, we apply our matrix within the standard basis, and then we come back up. Okay, well, what matrix takes us from here to here? Well, it's our column of eigenvectors base matrix. That's what takes us from, the, in any case, for any basis, our column of basis vectors matrix takes us to the standard basis, from the uh, basis B to the standard basis. Um, then we apply the transformation A by this matrix, and then we bring ourselves back up to the eigenvector basis using the inverse of this matrix, and now we have our matrix A sub B. 
So that means that a sub b has to be equal to what? We start here, first thing that happens is this. So we put this here, then this happens, then this happens. We calculate this, and lo and behold, we come out with the matrix we started this whole thing with, the diagonal matrix negative 2, 0, 0, 3. So that's what we would do if we had this matrix and wanted to diagonalize it. That's how we would diagonalize this matrix. Okay, just starting from scratch again, find the eigenvalues, find the associated eigenvectors. Your basis will then be the basis of those eigenvectors, and your transformation matrices, matrices will be your column of eigenvectors matrix and its inverse, and they would apply this way to give you the diagonalized matrix. Now, what good is a diagonalized matrix? Well, for one thing, it's really easy to take powers of a matrix, of a diagonal matrix. And then um, remember that having this column of eigenvectors matrix allows us to transform any transformation up here, including a squared or a cubed or a to the fifth down here, to get the second, third, fourth, fifth power of this matrix without actually having to calculate it down here. That's often a real advantage, especially if you have a high power of the matrix that you want to calculate. Okay, well, we'll do that in a minute.